This is the Blackout Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Blackout Podcast, where I get to talk to amazing people that do amazing things. And today I have Laura Good from FaceForge, right? <laughs> Thanks for coming on the podcast. How are you doing? Thank you for having me here today. I'm doing great. A little nervous, I'm not going to lie, but uh, I'll do my best. It's fine. We're just talking, right? Yeah. So let's start with what made you like, do you remember when you started painting and drawing? I've been drawing ever since I was a little girl, probably about five or six. Um, I used to draw little landscapes and people, and then I went on vacation, um, probably in elementary school, it was maybe grade three, grade four. I went to Quebec with my family, and there was a caricature artist there, and I was really fascinated by, like, his quick drawings. He could get, like, different features of your face and just... It was so quick, and it looked just like you, and I thought it was amazing. So I got a picture done, and then I started learning how to draw caricatures mm. and got the books and watched YouTube videos, and I started creating my own caricatures and cartoons. After a while, that started progressing. I dabbled in a little bit of paint every now and then, and then... um Recently, in the last couple of years, one of my clients at an Airbnb challenged me to do Nova Scotia sceneries. Mm. So ever since then, I I started painting sceneries. My artwork just started blooming, and it's just it's just been amazing. The support and from like different clients, family members, um, friends, all kinds of. Like, I feel great about it, so. Awesome. Um, like, <clears throat> so, with the caricature that happened, like, was that pencil or, like, uh, when you first started out? Most of the time I was doing just with pencil and shading, learning different types of shading. Um, I would do colored pencils every now and then. Maybe do a little bit of graphic arts on the computer to try and mix up. Uh, some different knowledge. Um, I also think, too, when I took makeup artistry and design, uh, that course really helped me in learning contrasting colors and blending and that sort of thing. Mm. So I feel like um, over the course of me teaching myself through books and things like that and uh, the knowledge that I had in cosmetic school that I've been able to perform these pieces. <laughs> and they look great. And and they're so colorful. Like, so you started with pencils. When the color, like, do you ever do pencils now that you're working so much in color? Um, Lately, I've been working with mostly paint and bright colors. Mm -hmm. But I will often shift back and forth uh, with pencil drawings and colored pencils. I try to um, not get out of it so that if somebody asks for just a drawing versus a painting, mm. I still know how to do it and I haven't lost it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do you now, when did you start like face forge and actually let's go how did you come up with that name so where i was doing caricatures and it was mostly based on caricatures i was trying to find a name that was original mm. um it's like you've heard of people like forging signatures and things like that and I was like, hmm, I guess it's kind of forging in a way. I'm taking somebody's face and I'm kind of forging it. And so that's where I came up with the name. Mm. So now where I didn't change the business name after doing the paintings, I was like, well, I could be forging the face of Lunenburg, the face of Bridgewater, the face of Peggy's Cove. 
it's not necessarily just somebody's face. It could be, it's like, if you know what I mean, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, pretty much the face of whatever it is. You just make your own version of that thing. Yeah. Right? So, like, the way I see Lunenburg, the way I see somebody is in, like, a cartoonish, illustrative way. And... And, and <clears throat> so... Oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> and when did when did you start face forge? Um, I would say probably five years ago is mm. when I started to really promote and start to sell my work. And about three years ago, I think two thousand eighteen, maybe, yeah, almost three years ago, not quite. Um, I started the scenery paintings. Mm. And then that's when I kind of blew up. Yeah. Um, are you from Lunenburg or? I'm from Bridgewater, so it is in Lunenburg County. Okay. Um, there's a lot of really neat, um, like fishing villages there. Um, I'm like 15 minutes from beaches. Do you find that the growing up there influences your work? I believe it does. Um. I love the small town knit communities. I love the colors. Uh, it's just so bright, especially in the summertime. Mm. It's like growing up, like especially like right in downtown Lunenburg, all the colors of the houses are so bright. Yes. And it's very, like it sticks out. And I love that it sticks out. I love Lunenburg. So, you know, when you're kind of like by the dock, right? And then you're just looking back at like the banker. Is that what that place is called? Is it the banker or? There is a restaurant there called the Grand Banker. The Grand Banker. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Amazing it's green. food. I love it there. I go there all the time. The fish and chips is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I go to Lunenburg to do stuff there, I try to go in there to eat their fish and chips. I like it. Yeah. But like the, their building is green right so when you're sitting on the dock and looking at that side of lunenburg it's just mm -hmm. colors everywhere mm -hmm. yeah yeah you're right and of course the traditional lunenburg red the bright bright red that sticks out everywhere like uh where's that museum on the corner is the red fisheries museum yeah yeah that one yep. yeah 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 and then now they have this little well for kids yes yeah <laughs> I, you know, I like lunenburg lunenburg is just a fun cute t except now in winter it's like it's so quiet it is very quiet i mean there is still a couple stores and restaurants open mm. but half of them are shut down for the season yeah um you don't have the old fish factory restaurant or the fish shack and there's uh but there is a couple like the Grand Banker I think only closes a couple weeks in the winter time. The salt shaker is still open. Mm. That's really good food there sometimes yeah. and um the knot is always open. So there's a lot of good places yeah. still. Yeah, yeah. Um I was in Lunenburg for the Lunenburg film uh doc, doc, the Lunenburg documentary festival. The, okay. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Um, so let's go back to your work, right? Uh I want you to walk me through some of these paintings that you brought in today. Okay. This for some reason reminds me of that the the school. Like there's a school in Lunenburg, the Lunenburg Academy, I guess. Yeah. For some reason, <laughs> it that's but what 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 is this painting representing? It's funny because that uh, house is directly across the street from the old Lunenburg Academy. Oh! Both of which are haunted. What? Yeah. Okay, so talk me through this. Because I've never heard this story. I don't know the exact story. Yeah. Um, but they do have uh, Lunenburg haunted walks. Oh. And uh, I believe there was one... Uh, close to Halloween this past year, or they do haunted tours, I think, in the summertime. Wow. I do want to attend one, <laughs> but, uh, 
<laughs> they and, and both the are directly is... across the road, oh. and as far as I know, they're both haunted. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I think the last time I was there, I noticed that it's like a library now. I think yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they do a lot of music programs. They have uh, different. Um, I think there's a group called Lamp that goes in there. Um, that they have different musical instruments that they play groups and they stay in some of the old Lunenburg houses. Okay. Um, they are usually there in the springtime. Oh, okay. It, uh, just different festivals and things that go on. A lot of things happen at the academy still. And the house is pink? The house is pink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, well... I'll be sure to check out that house next time I'm in Lunenburg. Because it's like, whenever I go to Lunenburg, I have to see the academy for some reason. I yeah. didn't even know it was haunted. Hmm. Okay. There's a graveyard right, right behind there. the school. Yeah. Yeah. I, I shot something in the graveyard and I made my friend walk through. But it was during the day, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'd do that at night. No? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's ironic because I really don't believe in ghosts, but I... Don't like graveyards. No. I was like, no. I, <laughs> it's like, I, I don't want my non belief of ghosts to be proven like wrong. Right. <laughs> I'm like, what if I go and then someone is just chilling down and they're like, oh, you know, this person is just chilling by his grave. No. Anyway. <laughs> so um, here is what is happening. And like, is, is so this is an alien, right? Yeah, so this one is a little bit, like, not typical what I would usually do. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to try something different, a little bit more imaginary. Um, I do kind of like aliens, like the extraterrestrial movies. And so I wanted to put a little bit of that into the painting as well. So it's like an alien and uh, is that a like a skull of some kind unicorn a of unicorn some kind? skull yes <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 at least i got that one right now is this one anything like uh lunenburg or that is the halifax waterfront oh oh whoa, 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 whoa. okay 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 and I guess let's talk about this one. How long would it take to make each one? It all depends on the size and the detail. Mm. Um, I would say um, average it takes is probably four hours. Okay. Plus, like, especially something like that, I would say three or four hours because of all the different colors and details that are in there. Mm. Um, I typically draw it out first, and then I'll kind of piece in the colors afterwards. So wow! And then I guess how do you decide on what color you use? How do you decide on which color you use? That's a very hard question. <laughs> um, <laughs> depending, like on. My mood, I guess, or what I see in mm. the reference photo that I use. Um, I kind of pick out the brightest colors of the picture. Like, if it was more of a, a pale sky, mm. you may not be able to see that as much, like, for, like, a daytime photo. So I brighten up the blue so that... It just really stands out. I try to pick colors that really stand out oh. in contrast against each other. Okay, 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 okay. And it's all like acrylic paint? Um, right now I am working with acrylic. Um, I just find that it takes like really quick to dry. Yeah. So then I don't lose my idea. Mm. Um, versus if I were to paint with oil, it takes days and days for it to dry that I may have one painting in my mind, but then I might go through four other paintings before I've completed it because yeah. my ideas will change and 
I can't get it down in enough time. Yeah. And, and yeah. this, where's this one from? That's from Peggy's Cove. Yeah. Do you so do you do you go there to draw or do you take pictures of the places you you paint? So usually what I do is I go around and take pictures of things that I like to paint mm. and then come home and paint them. Okay. Do you take one particular picture or just series of pictures and then create the image from this series of photos? Um, sometimes I will take multiple photos. Um, I'm, when I'm always going for drives, depending, maybe it's the color of the sky that day that I really like. So I'll snap a picture or I really like, um, how the boats are setting against the wharf or how, um, like maybe there's some lobster traps with buoys and I like the arrangement that's there. So I'll take a picture of it to save for later and then I'll incorporate sort of multiple pictures into one. Oh. So it's actually a lot more work than you make it seem. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, it's, it's a lot of work because I'm just trying to figure, because you, you take an element from each picture and then you make this painting. Yeah. So sometimes I may not only look at one specific reference photo, mm. I may have a few different reference photos to look at. So. <laughs> and what was the last time you painted someone? Painted someone? Like a... A caricature. Yeah. I did a lot over Christmas. Oh, God, of course. <laughs> I was so busy over Christmas. Yeah. Uh, a lot of late nights. Oh, man. And maybe four hours of sleep because I had <laughs> deadlines. And, of course, like, I have another side gig cleaning houses. And it's just between getting everybody ready for Christmas and then all my commissions. I was just flat out. <laughs> <laughs> but like you got everything done though. Yeah, I did. And how do you um manage your time? Uh it's very difficult. Lots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who is this person? That is Michael Jackson. Yeah, that is much. Um, and it, it isn't based on a particular photo, is it? Um, one day I was just like, I am going to paint Michael Jackson. I like listening to oldies music sometimes, and it's fun to listen to yeah. his music. And I decided I was going to paint him one day. So. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, I kind of remember the hair, the eyes. You know, and you're right, because if you're going to paint like a painting of the person, it takes longer, but like with the caricature, it's fun and you can still see the person in the exactly. painting. Exactly. I think I'll have myself. In. But that's the other thing. I'm like, what if I don't, what if I'm like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, like, sometimes I find it tricky to get certain features. Mm. Um, so like sometimes it comes easy, and then sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. Mm. Um, sometimes, depending on the face structure, like, I have a really hard time drawing teeth, to be honest. So you don't want people to smile? So I, I try to avoid drawing <laughs> teeth at all costs. But Do not smile. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm more, that's one thing I'm learning, and I'm starting to keep an open mind with bigger smiles. What, and What makes it difficult with the teeth to paint? I don't know what it is, but it's, some, like, it's hard to get the right texture and shapes because i know it makes it a little bit difficult like say if you have really pronounced eye teeth and they're kind of right there to create that that they're sort of out there you know what i mean mm. that it, when somebody smiles it's like you can tell that it's them because it, like, yeah, that's the person's smile, and nobody else has that smile. So you want to be able to... Recreate that. Recreate it. And there's a lot of shading involved to be able to 
make it look I just thought you just real more realistic yeah, like the person. <laughs> I just I just thought you just draw uh square uh, rectangles and stuff and that's it. Bye bye. It's, l- it's not. really <laughs> more complicated. Cause some teeth are square, some teeth are round, some teeth are oh, pointy. Yeah, sure. Like it's just yeah, 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 they're yeah. complicated. Yeah, yeah, okay. So don't smile. Okay. I'm taking notes because I think I might want to get one done for me. I would totally do and one for you. So um and then how do you find Instagram for face for it? Like how 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 do you find the uh the reception of face for on Instagram? How I people guess, receive it. How, like following? Yeah. yeah. I've found um I have been creating a lot of following lately. Um there's been these follow loops going around for people who are artists and crafters. Um, what is that? It's, it's called like makers follow loop or Canadian handmade follow loops. Okay. Um, so what it is, um, these people have designed a loop. That you say you have to like this photo, you have to use these specific specific hashtags, you have to tag like two and three of your friends to follow. Then you have to go in and follow all of those people who are following you. Mm. And everybody that likes that post and wants to do the loop has to follow those every they all have to follow everybody Mm. so it's fair like i'm liking somebody maybe in florida who crochets or somebody in i don't know ontario or bc that might paint or draw or take photos and it just creates kind of more volume or you've got different uh like I give you five likes if you give me five likes, <clears throat> and then you can post about that, and it ge- it generates more of the algorithms of Instagram and helps get it seen more. Yeah, and that's the thing, I guess, dealing with, you know, when you're an artist or when you're a creative, where it's like something visual, mm-hmm. uh, you, and then... Instagram doesn't even let your followers see what you you right, just did. Yeah. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> it's like I put in all this time, and then the people that follow me and even anyway, Facebook. <laughs> do you use Facebook at all for Facebook? Um, usually what I do is um, Instagram has a setting where it can share directly onto your business page. Yeah. So um, I usually tag the location. Like if I were to say post this painting here i would tag my location that i was at peggy's cove Mm. and then mark it as public on faceforge and share it that way on my facebook yeah so then that way it gets seen by people who may not have instagram yeah but uh i did some research on instagram um there's little kind of crash test courses on like Pinterest and YouTube and they say to use 30 hashtags to kind of uh, relate to the painting. Yeah. So I tag ones about being an artist, the location, what type of medium I use, um, I all kinds of different different things to get different people to see. And then, yeah. do you find do you have do you ever collaborate with other artists in doing work? I have before. And what would you make with them? So, um, I had a good friend Ben. Uh, his last name is Heb. I know I'm supposed to say the last <laughs> name too. It's okay. <laughs> um, we collaborated a painting together of an underwater world. So oh. um, he painted one half and I painted the other <gasps> half. So we had like an octopus in the middle that we kind of like it was the octopus face, but I drew my interpretation of his face and he did it from the other half. Oh. And there was like, I maybe had like a crab and a mermaid on mine <laughs> and he had some fish over on his and his style. But 
it all joined together. Mm. When it, was this done? This was done last winter. Oh, wow. How big was the painting? It was 24 by 36. <laughs> it was big, but it was a lot of fun to... How long complete. did that take? Oh, uh, we must have worked at it for probably five hours. Like five hours on my side, five hours on his side. And then, of course, sealing it afterwards and... Yeah, it was quite quite some time spent on it. Gosh, and how did that idea come about? Um, well, I've thought about collaborating before. And one night, it was a snowstorm. My friend and I were like, hey, let's let's do our collaboration. Let's try <laughs> it. And <laughs> that's where it went uh, about. Did you do it, like, at the same time? Or how did that work? Yeah, we... We sat in his room, had the tunes going, and he drew, drew on one side while I was drawing on the other so side. So it was like simultaneously happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But like, did you guys ever worry that the wounds gel each side? Well, we drew like we drew a line right down the middle. Yeah. So he stuck to his side and I stuck to my side and... If he was working over this way, I maybe would work on things over on the other side so that we didn't bump each other. Gosh. And <laughs> anyway, uh, so where is that painting now? So that was sold on the... I did a recent auction um, for the wildfires in Australia. Oh, yeah, yeah. I felt really awful for the situation that happened there. And I was also at the same time wondering how I could clear some space to do some new projects. Mm. And so um, I put a bunch of my paintings up for an auction to help uh, with a fundraiser there. Mm. So one of the ladies that bid it on um, that painting, she won. And she just lives up the street from oh, where okay. I live. So Okay. Wow, that's very thoughtful. It went thoughtful. to a good cause. <laughs> yeah, that's very thoughtful. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the things you're currently working on now? So I have two commissions that I have to do um, for May. Some re um, recreations of previous paintings that I've done um, for an Airbnb in Shelburne. Mm. Um, I have... Another one I have to do for my friend's office. Uh, he wants one of a Bridgewater scene with a UFO coming down <laughs> and some aliens walking around. <laughs> That's very specific. I have another one that I have to do for a friend in Ontario. He wants uh, a Chris Cornell painting with oh. the... Um, somehow collaborating with the... The sound garden symbol off of one of the albums. So that's wow. going to be quite difficult. Yeah. But interesting. Yeah. But so there's a few pieces that I have to work on. But... And do you ever make things for yourself? Not typically. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes I do like, I guess, things like those sugar skulls and aliens that I hang up in my own spot but mm. then I'm like nah I want something different <laughs> I'm always switching every few months okay. for something else so okay so um, I'm gonna end it with this though um, doing all you do and especially with the passion you're bringing into I, I guess your passion shows in your painting but Doing it for so long and then doing it for people and when you find time to do it for yourself and collaborating, how or what do you do to keep that passion going? I'm always looking for inspiration. Um, like going for drives, hikes, walks, um, listening to music, all anything like that can spark an interest in a painting or a drawing mm. and always I always find ways to inspire like 
for inspiration. I could paint Lunenburg waterfront a thousand times and each painting would look different. Mm. And so like there's just so many things to paint that there's like not enough time to paint them all. <laughs> I'm always inspired. Oh my god, thank you so much for coming, Laura. No and problem. sharing your wonderful work. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Same here. This is the Blackout Podcast. listening.